It's the first Sunday of Lent, and in today's first reading, we have the story of Adam and Eve. Where would we find the story of Adam and Eve in the Bible? Genesis. It's in Genesis. I believe it's in the Old Testament. In the book of Genesis. You would find the story of Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis. First book of the Bible. It's the very first story in the Bible in the book of Genesis. It is in the book of Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible. <laughs> That's where it all begins. <laughs> in your own words, can you tell us the story of Adam and Eve and of the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden? Okay, so God created Adam, and Adam was alone for a while. Adam and Eve were our parents. They were the first two people. God created man first, and then he created the woman. But I think it's out of Adam's rib that he creates Eve, his partner. That's the way it was. They were happy. And apparently they were, they didn't have any clothes on. They were naked. According to the story, they were naked. And so they didn't see anything wrong with it. The Lord told Adam and Eve that they could have anything they wanted, but they had to stay away from this certain tree. There was this beautiful tree there and a serpent around it. And they could eat anything else. They could have anything else in paradise except for that, that fruit and that tree. God tells them, it's yours. Anything in here is yours except that apple tree. So, don't eat from it. It's forbidden. Stay away. And so, um, Eve went over to, you know, looking at the tree and like, ooh, you know, the tree, this, we're not supposed to touch this tree. And then uh, a serpent who supposedly was the devil. She listened to the serpent and it's supposed to have been the devil that told her to do this, to eat it, it was okay, it tastes great. And he talked to Eve first, and he told Eve, you know why God does not want you to eat from that fruit? Because from that tree is because you will be smarter than he will be. And so Eve was really tempted. And I think she probably hesitated at first because she knew how God was, and he had given them everything there that they needed. And so, um, she took a bite of the fruit and then she gave it to Adam. And Eve convinced Adam that if they ate the apple, then they would probably have the same powers as God. And uh, he fell for it. And Adam probably said, no, we can't do that because he said not to. And her being a woman persuaded him, stating, well, if we go ahead and eat from the fruit, let's see what's going to happen. Maybe we would be better than he is, or greater than he. Well, lo and behold, Eve convinces Adam, I'm afraid to say, to eat an apple from the apple tree that was forbidden by God. He went ahead and ate the apple with her, and uh, that was the scene, the first of the scene that happened, that they didn't obey God. And they realized that they were without clothes and naked and were ashamed of themselves. And they also looked at each other and found themselves, they were naked. They didn't have anything on them. So they kind of got, you know, said, oh my dear, look at him. And she probably said, look at her. That's how they were booted out. <laughs> Eve ate the fruit and blamed it on the serpent. Whose fault was it that Eve ate the fruit? Was it the serpent's fault or was it Eve's fault? It was Eve's fault. The serpent's fault. It was the serp serpent's fault because certain ser serpent was uh, Satan. The serpent must have made it really tempting to her and said, "Oh, this is really good and nice, and you know, you'll eat it and you'll have like like I said earlier, all the knowledge that God has." Well, who doesn't want to have all the knowledge that God had? I want to say that it was the serpent's fault. Well, now I guess it would be Eve's fault because. Eve had a choice, you know, and so she could have said, no, God said, don't eat that fruit, and I'm not going to do it, but she did. Eve ultimately did eat the fruit. I mean, she could have said no. Well, we have to take responsibility. I believe she, she should have been more responsible and listened to God instead of the serpent. Everybody blames Eve, you know, the woman. It's always the woman's fault. Uh, according to my mother. Even though the serpent kind of told her about it, it was her because she was the one that had the final say. I think it was both of them. You know, the devil tempted Eve, and Eve, probably being a little weak-minded, 
uh, in spirit, ate the apple. That's kind of hard to decide who was to blame, who is the one person to blame. They're both to blame, I think. Adam played the blame game too. Whose fault was it that Adam ate the fruit? Adam's. He also had a choice. <laughs> so he chose to eat it instead of sticking to his faith. It's, there's always a blame game here. Like the devil make me do it. Women have a way of convincing their spouses. <laughs> he could have said no, but having his loving Eve there and wanting to please her and say, okay, well, if you ate it, I'll eat it too. In that case, I'll blame half Eve and half Adam. <laughs> it was a combination, I would think. Uh, I think it was a serpent for introducing it in the first place, uh, but Adam ate it out of Eve's insistence. Well, Adam could have said no to her also. He could also have told her no. We're not going to do it. I don't want to do it. You're not going to make me do it. You know, he could have said no, but she tempted him, you know, temptation. That's, that's I think, the whole point of, this, of the story. What was the fruit that Adam and Eve ate? Well, everyone keeps saying it's the apple. It was an apple that he ate. I don't, we don't know. It was an apple. An apple. An apple. From an apple tree. I'm not sure exactly. I think it was an apple, but I, I've heard different versions. It's supposedly an apple, but it was some other kind of fruit. But um, I think it, the apple, everybody knows about the apple. When you read scripture, they say forbidden fruit, and other times there's specifically that it's an apple. You know, no one knows what fruit it was. It could have been a banana for all we know, or pineapple, or a peach but everyone has come down to say it was an apple. The Bible refers to it only as the fruit or the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. Why do you think so many people think it was an apple? Wow, I've never thought of that. I just heard that it was an apple from an apple tree. So no, I don't know where that came from, to tell you the truth. Because I was taught that it was an apple. I have no idea. I don't know. I really don't know why. I guess it's just something that we kind of all learned, or the Bible, or at least that's what they've told us in the story, that it was an apple. It probably came from where the writer, whoever wrote this uh, into English, probably was an apple tree or something. something. Uh, they had to call some kind of fruit. I'm a teacher, so an apple symbolizes knowledge. You know, a teacher, you give an apple to the teacher on the first day of school and she falls in love with you and you know, you have it made throughout the rest of the year. And maybe because you see apples, you see little worms come out of the apple. And maybe that's why, because you really don't see, you know, peaches or pears depicted with a little worm. And maybe that little worm represents the serpent. Many scripture scholars believe that this was the fruit from the forbidden tree. Do you recognize this fruit? No, absolutely not. I don't know what that is. No, it, I never, never seen that as the sample. What does it look like? To me, it looks like a, a lot of peppers, but uh, in the shape of a star or a flower. It looks like a starfish on hormones. To me, it looks like a starfish. To me, it looks like a starfish or it looks like a huge flower of some sort. It looks like an octopus. An octopus with two eyes. To me, it looks like an octopus, like something in the in the water. It looks like a uh, some sort of sea urchin, to tell you the truth. <laughs> this is another variety of the forbidden fruit. It's called a citron. How would you describe what a citron looks like? To me, it looks like a melon, like maybe a cantaloupe, or yeah, or maybe even a squash. It looks like some kind of a squash type plant. Yeah, I think it kind of looks more like a squash. I would think a squash. But looking at the leaves of it, it kind of looks like maybe those leaves are something like a lemon or an orange. A citron looks like, an, uh, has the outer look. Uh, it's yellow and a sort of orange uh, mixture and it kind of looks a little bit like an orange, although it's not round. Citron looks like a mix of a uh, orange and a uh, what is that uh i can't think of that other fruit that's that color it looks like a long shaped pear with blemishes <laughs> to me it looks like a, a gummy looking gummy looking fruit 
The citron has a thick rind and not a lot of juice. If we can tempt you to eat it, tell us what a citron tastes like. It's like a little bit like a licorice kind of taste. Licorice. It doesn't taste fruity. <laughs> Okay, well the texture is kind of gooey and kind of hard, um, doesn't look too appetizing, kind of looks like gummy bear, uh, the stuff that gummy bears are made out of. The texture is almost like eating hominy that they put in menudo, uh, a sweet taste, it's got a sweet taste, um, actually it's pretty good. <laughs> oh yuck. <laughs> it, um, I don't like it. It's not sweet. <laughs> I can't tell you what it tastes like. You know, the word citron, to me, when you said that, reminds me of a citronella candle. And it, if you could taste a candle, I would think that it would probably taste something similar to this. Maybe they make citronella candles out of this. I'm not sure. But it's not a very tempting taste. I mean, it's something I will never try again. A little almost minty flavor. I don't know why Eve would have thought this was really super special to, to offer to Adam. It tastes like orange rind, a sweetened orange rind. It's not bad. It wouldn't be my first choice. But it's good. Sweet. It's sweet, but it's crunchy. And it tastes great. Not very tasty. It, it, it reminds me of... Lemon Pledge. <laughs> not, not that I've ever eaten Lemon Pledge. It's sweet. I kind of like it. I wonder if you wanted to eat it. <laughs> a, a lot of kids will love this. <laughs> it, it tastes great. Thank you for watching this episode of Fides Popoli. Thank you for watching this episode. What other biblical food should we try? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Have a happy first Sunday of Lent. Happy first Sunday of Lent. Happy first Sunday of Lent. Happy first Sunday of Lent and many more.